guys, we are Sean and Christy Michael of the world famous Long Long Honeymoon blog. Today we have a really fun topic. What else? Alaska. The people have spoken. You want more Alaska content. We're going to give you more Alaska content. And today we're going to answer a very, very important question. And that concerns what time of year we went to Alaska and what time of year you should go to Alaska. So this is an all-time late start for us. Woohoo! Leaving at about 9 p.m. on whatever it is, July. Saturday, July 21st. I'm kind of stressed because I don't know. It just seems like there's a thousand and one things to pack and nail down before you leave. We finally got it done, I guess. But we are finally on the road. We left the Deep South, our home, on July 21st, and the year was 2012. I don't think the year really matters, frankly, because uh, the broad parameters of this journey are not going to change much from year to year. But the time of year is crucially important. We were leaving very late in the season, leaving on July 21st. Mm -hmm. When we left our home, it was scorching hot. Driving across Missouri, we reached temperatures of above 115 degrees mm -hmm. on, on the highway. And throughout the course of our journey, by the way, uh, we encountered temperatures as low as probably 14 degrees in Canada when we we're coming back down from Alaska. So we really had to pack for the gamut. We had to pack for hot, hot summer weather and also for icy cold winter weather. Yeah, and that's something I think a lot of people don't realize with Alaska. When you're there in the summertime, don't expect summertime weather. <laughs> right. You know, it's it's chilly, late fall type of weather, you know, where you're going to need long sleeves, you're going to need a jacket. At nighttime, you're really going to need a jacket because, you know, it can get down in the mid-30s at night in the middle of summer. So just remember that. Do some good research on, you know, typical temperatures before you start your packing. So we left on July 21st and we took a rather leisurely pace getting to the border of Alaska. We did not really rush. And uh, I believe it took us about 30 days to arrive at the border of From Alaska. Alabama. Right. Yes. Because we didn't really want to rush across uh, British Columbia and the Yukon Territory. I think we took about 11 days on the Alaska Highway. The weather was very nice going up as we got farther and farther north, of course. Temperatures cooled. We were still catching some long days. I mean, daylight would linger to 10.30 or 11 o'clock at night. And the mosquitoes were dying off. Mm -hmm. uh, mosquitoes can be really tenacious in yeah. like the Yukon Territory and Alaska. I as think was, the last place we really encountered mosquitoes was Liard Hot Springs. Yeah. Further north than that, I don't really recall seeing many mosquitoes. I really lost a lot of blood in Liard Hot Springs. <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> it was bad. It was pretty bad then, but you know, once we got past there, I think we were pretty good. So uh, when we arrived in Alaska, we're talking about third week of August. From a weather standpoint, the timing was just about perfect. Gorgeous. Rainy season had not yet begun and the leaves were beginning to turn autumn colors. If you look at a map of Alaska, you'll see there's sort of a logical loop. I mean, you're driving up from kind of the southeast, of course, and we felt it was best for our itinerary to start going up to Fairbanks. Yeah. So we went, you know, as far north as we could almost in the first day or so that we were right. in Alaska. Yeah. We spent a night in Toke, and then from Toke, we booked it on up to Fairbanks. You know, in the time we were in Alaska, we really stayed at a huge variety of campgrounds. We stayed at privately owned full hookup campgrounds. Mm -hmm. We stayed in city parks. We boondocked in turnouts mm -hmm. and uh, just various 
places. We actually boondocked in the Wasilla Walmart parking lot one night. It was actually a very nice Walmart. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> one thing I'll say about the time of year that we went as well is that we missed the crowds. There were still people there, there was still activity, but it wasn't just swarmed with people. And we had several campgrounds that we stayed at that said, oh, if you'd been here three weeks ago, you wouldn't have gotten a spot, you know? Right. So I was happy to hear that we missed those sorts of throngs of people just because, you know, we don't make reservations far in advance. When we went through Denali, now if you've never been to Denali National Park, you should know you can't really drive your own vehicle deep into the park. You have to take a bus. Yeah, I think you can only go about the first 12 or 15 miles. Um, Denali is basically one long road back into the park. So you, you only, there's only one way in and one way out. So there's one last campground, I think maybe around mile 12 or 15, which stays completely booked. It was completely packed when we were there, so we were not able to get in there. So we stayed at a private campground right outside the park. But you have to take a bus. See, this time of the year, you guys take the prettiest time of the year, as you can see some of these poplar bushes and other brush around is changing uh, the colors different now. Should have a gorgeous trip with nothing else. The weather was perfect, you know, because you're when you take those buses, you know, they're kind of open air buses. You know, it's nice that we weren't sweltering in there. We could put our windows down and not worry about bugs because it was later in the season, so that was nice. If you don't camp in the backcountry, you know, Denali can can wipe you out because you basically get on your bus and we didn't even go all the way to the end of the road. We only went to like the the furthest visitor center, which I think is like mile 70 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that trip, round trip, was like nine hours, I think. Right. So that's a pretty long day. So Denali can definitely take a lot out of you just from riding on the bus. You can. <laughs> <laughs> so after we left Denali, we headed south into uh, the Wasilla slash Palmer area which is really just outside of Anchorage. So I, it was a good place to be. In fact, in Palmer, we rendezvoused with an Airstream caravan and had a lot of fun hanging out with fellow Airstreamers who were on the Wally Byam Caravan Club, or WBCCI uh, caravan to Alaska and back. And so we had a great time hanging out with those guys for a few days. Yeah, I think there were about 30 rigs or so. So that was really cool to be just in this campground full of Airstreams and to see how they coordinate their big rallies and get everybody going at the same time. It's really interesting. The, this is what yeah, Airstreamers do in Alaska. Takes care of all your problems. That's right. Olives are for catching salmon. <laughs> <laughs> And in the Palmer Wasilla area, you had a lot of amenities. I mean, there were some nice restaurants around there. There were obviously all the big box stores. So if you wanted to stock up on supplies and or like do some maintenance, get things fixed, it was a good place to do that. And we could easily shoot over to Anchorage for, for dinner or just uh, day trips. <laughs> We also happened to be in Palmer during the Alaska State Fair. And that's a really great state fair if you get a chance to go. They have lots of great rides. The food is amazing. They have so many vendors. And then of course they have the livestock and all that good stuff. So if you get a chance to coincide with the Alaska State Fair, that was a real treat. State Fair in Alaska is it's kind of a big deal. It I mean, is. It's, it's like the social thing to do. Like everybody that lives around there, that's, you know, they look forward to it for months and they go almost every day. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's yeah. a real treat. I mean, it's a great way to sample a lot of different tastes of Alaska. But they had so many different types of food there from different countries that I was really impressed. So we had a great time at the Alaska State Fair. Mm -hmm. And then from Anchorage, we ended up heading south. We stopped in Saldatna for a night and saw, you know, there's a river there uh, in Saldatna. I think it's, is it the Kenai River? And they have a lot of salmon fishing there. So we stopped and saw that and then we drove on down. 
would go to Homer, Indiana, which is 3,000 miles away. Homer, Ohio, 3,083 miles. Or what you say, Homer, Alaska, 160 miles. <laughs> you you kind of got to go to Homer and go out to the Homer Spit. You know, that's where uh, all of the fishing boats leave. If you've ever watched The Deadliest Catch. Yeah, I think the Time Bandit is the ship that is docked in Homer. So they sell like the t-shirts and everything there. And he was out to sea when we were there, but. <laughs> it's, it's definitely kind of touristy, but you kind of gotta go, I guess. It's an interesting <laughs> place. And we went, of course, to the Salty Dog Saloon. I would recommend going there because it's this kind of tiny hole in the wall, weird building. <laughs> I would recommend going there because they have beer, so. Yes, they do have beer. Any place with beer is pretty cool to make. Seward has some incredible RV camping that is waterfront and it's provided by the city. The story, as I understand it, is that 40 or 50 years ago there was a bad earthquake in the town and it left that ground by the water kind of unstable and they don't really want to build permanent structures there, mm -hmm. but it's a perfect place for RVs to park. <laughs> now, it, it, it's no hookup. It was cheap. It was we'll cheap. Um, because we were waterfront, we literally backed up and there was a little shore, rocky shore, and the water was right there. You could lay in bed and watch the waves crash on the shore and see the ships come in and it was beautiful. And they had a really great aquarium there that was just next to the campground on the waterfront there. And we saw some really cool, you know, sea lions and all that good stuff. So it was, it was a cool little aquarium. And at this point, the weather was still holding up pretty good. Mm -hmm. It was drizzling a little bit, but not not bad. I mean, light rain a couple of days. Yeah, the weather's kind of gray and rainy, but they say that you see more marine life on a rainy day, right? Yeah, the, the guy at the uh, visitor center said that actually rainy days are even better because apparently uh, it turns up the, the water and so the sea life can't see very clearly underneath the water. They can't see their food very clearly. So apparently they come up to the surface more frequently than if it was a sunny day. We'll Whether see. that's true or not, I don't know. But. You know, we're talking about at this point in our journey, we were in, I guess, September, kind of in the, in the middle of September. Mm -hmm. We went to Valdez mm -hmm. and that's when things started to turn for the worse because the weather started becoming more and more uh, colder and rainier as we went into Valdez. Yeah. And in Valdez, we really got swamped. Well, we are in uh, Valdez. We pulled up stakes and we're making an unplanned departure at about 5.30 p.m. Just made a supply run because this is probably the last real grocery store we're gonna see for, uh, I don't know, for a long time. Probably until we get down to Whitehorse in the Yukon. Truthfully, the weekend's been kind of a washout. We were gonna take a boat tour today, and we got this instead. We are gonna take a helicopter tour tomorrow, but I think the weather's not gonna allow that. So we're gonna head up and just sort of set our sights on Glen Allen, and we're kind of beginning the exit of this portion of Alaska anyway. When we originally set out on this trip, some two months ago. My fear was the weather and the roads. Roads turned out to be a little better than expected, as did overall the weather. The weather overall has been quite good if you look at it over the course of one full month. I would say over half of our time here we had very good weather, as in picture perfect 70 degrees and sunny. But probably a third of the time we had piss poor weather uh, which is kind of like this now you know I, I believe that the month of July was like this for the entire month so uh, it's not a big surprise one thing about Alaska that's really unusual is the window of opportunity with the good weather and this trip has really clarified that in my mind I mean you know you've got that summer season 
and uh, it, once it's gone, it's gone. And when the weather turns rough, it can turn really rough. We got a phone call from our campground and they warned us that we should leave town tonight because apparently flooding is quite common along the highway here and there's really only one road in and out of town. And if that road washes out, you are out of luck. This weekend already, we've probably had seven to nine inches of rain. And incidentally, over the next couple of days, we're supposed to have uh, hurricane force winds. We're talking like winds up to, I think, 120 miles per hour. We've been in Alaska for more than one month. So I think we've gotten a good taste of what we came here for. Alaska is such a massive state. You can't see it all in one trip. You know, what we've done is cherry pick experiences throughout the state. And I feel we've gotten a really good overview of what the state has to offer. This right here was barely even there when we came through two days ago. And this waterfall right here was just kind of a dinky little trinkle. Look at it now. Look at bridal veil, it's ridiculous. Look at this. At, at this point, we're talking about uh, it's late September, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, it's pretty and, late in December. And, and quite frankly, at this point, we have stayed too long. I yeah, mean, a little too long. The, the most RV travelers would not even consider being up there at yeah. this point, and so we really felt like we were kind of hightailing it south, as yeah. the saying goes, because we were running away from the weather. And <laughs> the other factor we were concerned about was the requirement for snow chains on our tires. We did not have chains for our tires. And so we wanted to get far enough south so that that wouldn't be a concern. Yeah, I think on the Alaska Highway, you're required to have snow chains after the first week of October, maybe. And so we were approaching that deadline and we did not want to have to buy snow chains. We didn't want to be in that situation. Another issue you're going to have as you head south, if you linger that late in the season, is some of the campgrounds are going to be closed. Mm -hmm. Because as October approaches, a lot of those campgrounds start shutting down if they haven't already shut down. Yeah, when we came back through Toke on our way south, all the campgrounds in town had already closed. I mean, there were a couple of times when we were, you know, having to hunt to find an available dump station because mm -hmm. the campgrounds were closed and we simply couldn't find a place to empty our tanks. So that's just something you need to be prepared for. I think towards the end of September, you've probably already lingered too long. But August and early September yeah. were a beautiful, beautiful weeks. I mean, really, those were sort of like the sweet spot, perhaps, for us that year right. from a weather standpoint and a crowd and traffic standpoint. Yeah, for sure. We definitely miss the crowds. So that is a brief overview, or perhaps not so brief, <laughs> of when to take your trip to Alaska. I'm sure it varies just a bit from year to year, depending upon, you know, whatever weather is happening that year but for us it worked out very well to arrive on mid to late august and to hit that sweet spot yeah. uh, and we stayed up there for a good six weeks at least yeah i think if you arrived probably the first of august and stayed august in the first two weeks of september that would be like the perfect, That's probably perfect. sweet spot because then when you left in mid-september you know, you wouldn't have a problem finding campgrounds or dump stations, you know, when you're heading south. So if you have taken your RV to Alaska, I would like to ask a favor of you. Why don't you comment, post a comment beneath this video and share your opinion for when you think the best time is to go. Yeah, because we've even encountered some people that go in May and they say, well, that's really too early because there's still snow on the ground in some places. Nope. It's interesting to ask around and sort of get opinions from people that have been there at different times of the year and what they thought about it. I think we were definitely very late to the game, but <laughs> we're always late, so that's nothing new. That's okay. So anyway, that's our chat about timing your trip to Alaska. As always, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're new here, please subscribe to our channel because subscriptions make us very happy. And it's just good karma, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it's free. It is free. All you gotta do is push the little button. Until next time, safe travels, happy camping, and lolo ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. 
disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Say hi. Are you being shy? <laughs> Are you being shy? Hmm? What a sweet little baby she is. You such a sweet baby girl. You see Sean over there? Huh? You see Sean over there? Yeah. <laughs> Say I'm a sweet girl.